on the inside, you can let them in at this particular moment in time. I want to preach this message when men walk with God. Ask the person beside you, are you walking with God? Ask them again, are you walking with God? Ladies and gentlemen, it is quite interesting to note that research says to all of us that healthy Americans on average take 10,000 steps per day. That really doesn't mean much to you until you come to the understanding there are 5,280 feet in the span of one mile, which says to all of us that healthy Americans on average walk about two miles per day. One of the grave realities of many of us as men is that many of us as men neglect our health. We neglect our health because many of us do not eat right. We neglect our health because many of us refuse to exercise. We neglect our health because many of us do not handle stress in a proper way. When it is that we find ourselves stressed out in spite of the Bible declaring in Philippians 4 verse number 6, be anxious for nothing. Don't allow the cares of this world to break you down and cause you to have anxiety attacks but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your requests be made known unto God we know what the Bible says don't worry about anything pray about everything ask God for what you need and thank him in advance but in spite of what the scriptures declare many of us are neglecting our health because we don't handle stress in a proper way when we find ourselves agitated irritated frustrated on the verge of stressing out many of us try to smoke it away drink it away and some of us even attempt to sex it away only to find that it's nothing more than a temporary fix and because it's nothing more than a temporary fix we find ourselves right back in that very state of depression when God does not intend for us to be depressed but he intends for us to have some joy we neglect our health because we don't eat right we neglect our health because we don't handle stress right but allow me to pause to tell somebody we neglect our health not just because we don't eat right not just because we don't handle stress right but we neglect our health because we don't do the proper things to take care of our bodies have you not considered that to neglect your health is to be selfish towards your family your family needs you your children need you your wife needs you and so therefore as a consequence because they know that you need you because God has called you to provide for your families they tell you go to the doctor Doug. Any brother ever heard that statement from your family? You feel a pain inside of your chest? Somebody says, go to the doctor. Your response is, I'm all right. <laughs> You're having headaches on a regular basis? Your family says, go to the doctor. Your response is, I'm all right. And at the root of us refusing to go to the doctor is a thing called fear. You know what the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. But in spite of you quoting all of that scripture, many of us are neglecting our health because we are afraid to go to the doctor. I want you to know not only does your family need you, not only does your children need you, not only do your wives need you I want you to know that your church needs you I know that the church is 30% men and 70% women but men I want you to understand that this vision that God has placed upon the new rising star church is too big for one man to carry have you not considered that Jesus didn't carry his vision and his ministry by himself neither should I have to carry this vision and this ministry all by myself but Jesus used the concept of shared leadership somebody shout shared leadership Sunday School 101 taught all of us that he fed the 5,000 in John chapter number 6, but Jesus didn't feed the 5,000. The Bible declares that he broke bread, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, and in turn, his disciples fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. Can you imagine how long it would have taken if one man had to feed everybody? Can you imagine how many people would have died from dehydration inside of the desert? 
desert if one man had to feed everybody but because he used the concept of shared leadership he didn't carry his vision by himself I want to say to every man it is not just your wife who needs you it is not just the children who need you it is not just the family who needs you but this church needs you God did not make you to sit inside of the church and do nothing like a bump on a log but God made you to be a world changer I need every brother in here under the sound of my voice to shout I'm a world changer we know this to be true because scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter number 2 starting with verse number 9 that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That word peculiar means that you stick out like a sore thumb. You can't get away with what everybody else gets away with. He says, and you've been called forth to show the praises of him who've called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light because you are a world changer if God did not have anything for you to do inside of his kingdom he would have saved you killed you and took you to heaven at that particular moment in time but the fact that he saved us men and left us on earth says that God has a plan for your life God has a will for your life God has a destiny for your life God has a purpose for your life is there any brother in here who can attest to the reality that when everybody else said that you wouldn't make it when everybody else said that you never amount to anything when everybody else threw your name in the mud that God didn't throw you away but he put you in a recycling bin and he uses us over and over and over again in spite of all of my faults in spite of all of my failures in spite of all of my mess ups in spite of all of my shortcomings you sitting up here looking at me crazy like you don't have any faults inside of your life but thank God that even when I mess up he's not just the God of a second chance I used up my second chance a long time ago I serve the God of another chance he keeps giving us chance after chance after chance after chance God has a plan for your life but you cannot fulfill the plan of God on your life if we neglect our physical health the first reason that many of us as men should not neglect our physical health is because God lives inside of my body somebody shout my body is the temple that's what Paul the apostle of Jesus says when he writes to the church at Corinth according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 starting with verse number 19 he says to these people in the Old Testament God and the spirit of God dwelt in buildings made of brick and mortar but in the New Testament God is no longer living inside of a building made with brick and mortar but out of all of the places he can live when you confess Christ he lives inside of your body do you know who's living on the inside of you I'm talking about the creator of the universe I'm talking about the one who woke you up this morning I'm talking about the one who put food on our tables I'm talking about the one who put clothes on our backs I'm talking about the one who spoke and said let there be light and then light came into existence I'm talking about the one whom the psalmist says in Psalms 24 that the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein I'm talking about the mighty one I'm talking about the awesome one I'm talking about the omnipotent all powerful one he lives inside of your body and because he lives inside of my body I don't care how great my challenge I can say greater is he that sent me than he that's inside of the world somebody shout he lives inside of me what happens when a holy God is living inside of an unhealthy body. I'm going to ask that question again. What happens when a holy God is living inside of an unhealthy body? A holy God in an unhealthy body will get us into heaven, but a holy God in an unhealthy body will keep us from being productive on earth. I want you to know, brothers, that God didn't just save you and take you to heaven. He left you here not just to be faithful, but to be fruitful. God wants you to protect on earth not only must I not neglect my physical health hear this clearly ladies and gentlemen because my body is God's temple but number two in the absence of physical health it is absolutely impossible to fulfill the great commission 
you remember that after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, the Christ, Son of the living God, just before he ascends into heaven, he gives to his disciples his very last words. And his very last words ought to be the first priority of the church. We call it the Great Commission. Somebody shout Great Commission. Y'all sound sleep at 11.45 a.m. I need you to shout it into the whole east side. Here's your, somebody shout the Great Commission. Last words of Jesus ought to be the first priority of the church. He says to his disciples, the future leaders of the New Testament early church, he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Another translation says, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. Have you not considered in layman's terms he's saying that now that you've confessed Christ you have a responsibility to know Christ and to make him known to the entire world I'm going to say it again that's our responsibility to know Christ and to make him known to the entire world the first word in the great commission is not a noun the first word in the great commission is not a pronoun but the first word in the great commission is a verb that verb is the word go somebody shout go in the absence of physical health you can't go nowhere laid up in the hospital bed in the absence of physical health it's impossible to go anywhere when I can't stand on my feet because my diabetes are out of control in the absence of my physical health it's impossible to go anywhere to make Christ known to the entire world when my blood pressure is out of control I'm not talking about health conditions that you have no control over I'm talking about something that you can do something about and take preventative measures inside of your life. Isn't it amazing that Christ tells us to go, which means that we are supposed to be missionary, but in spite of us supposedly supposed to be missionary, many of us act as if we are stationary. And I believe that if Christ came back today, he would sue the church for false advertisement. Because on every sign we say missionary. But don't nobody want to go nowhere. <laughs> and even when I want to go somewhere, I won't feel like going nowhere because I'm tired. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, I need me some Debbie cake. <laughs> I want to go somewhere, but I don't feel like going nowhere because I don't eat right. I want to go somewhere, but I don't feel like going anywhere because I don't exercise right. Anybody ever been not just tired, but oh, God, I'm tired. <sighs> Can you imagine me trying to preach three times on a Sunday morning? I get up, oh, I'm tired, yeah, I'm tired. For God, so love. <laughs> For God, <laughs> y'all so silly. What I'm saying to all of us is that in the absence of physical health, it's impossible to fulfill the Great Commission. Third thing that I want to say to all of us in here under the sound of my voice, the goal is not just physical health. But on top of physical health, there must be spiritual health. Everybody say spiritual health. Spiritual. On average, the healthy American takes 10,000 steps per day, walks two miles per day. But I want to tell somebody my spiritual health is not contingent upon how many steps I take. My spiritual health is contingent upon how many of those steps I take with God I wish I could get some help in here I'm going to say it again my physical health is contingent upon the amount of steps I take but my spiritual health is contingent upon the amount of steps that I take with God I want to ask every brother this question who you walking with are you singing a song on 95.7 jams, 107.7 east side, walk it out, west side, walk it out, south side, walk it out, north side, walk it out. I want to ask this question, who are you walking it out with outside the church? It's easy to walk with God when you are in church and under authority. But the question is, when I leave the four walls of the church, am I still walking with God? 
if you want to know the character of a man, don't look at him in church. If you want to know the character of a man, ask his wife. She's seeing when he ain't in church. If you want to know the character of a man, don't look at him in church. If you want to know the character of a man, ask his children. That's why many of our families have a hard time coming to church because the man they see in church ain't the man they see at home. Spiritual health is not about how many steps I take. It's about how many steps I take with God. Can I prove it to you? Psalms 1-1. Blessed is the man. That word blessed means to be happy. Anybody want to be happy or you want to be sad? Happy is the man who walks in the right company. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate both day and night. And he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, his leaf won't wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. What the psalmist is saying to all of us, brothers, if we want to be blessed, if we want to be happy, our blessing and our happiness is contingent upon who we walk with. You got to hang around the right company. The right company is not the counsel of the ungodly. It is not the way of sinners. It is not the seat of the scornful. But the reason that many of us hang around the wrong company, in spite of being worn on the outside, I wouldn't hang around them. You say, we ain't doing them but just walking. You think you can handle it, but notice the progression of sin in the text. The walk turns to a standstill. Standstill turns to a sit down. And a sit down can turn into a lay down. Don't fool me. How many of us have laid down with people we had no business laying down with and it could have been prevented if we walked with the right company? If the company you walk with is pulling you away from God and not pushing you towards God, you need to find you a new circle of friends to walk with. But his delight, somebody shout delight. God's looking for some men who can walk with God and love God so much to the point that when you walk with them, it's not a duty, it's a delight. He's looking for some men who can walk with God and love God so much to the point that when you walk with God, it's not a burden, but it's a blessing. His delight is in the law of the Lord. I want to ask this question. Where are the men who are hungry for the word of God? When you're hungry for God's word, your wife doesn't beat you to church the only time you beat your wife is to beat her to church. Somebody just missed it. I, yeah. Yeah. When you really hungry for God, nobody has to beg you to come to church. Nobody has to pump you to come to church. Nobody has to prime you to come to church. When you're really hungry for the word of God, you don't just come on Sunday, but you make up inside of your mind. I'm walking with God, but every now and again I get tired. So I got to stop in here on Wednesday. And I got to get a fill up. What happens when we walk with God? His delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of God. And in his law does he meditate both day and night. And here are the benefits to walking with God. When you walk with God, it'll plant you. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. When you walk with God, it'll cause you to be productive. You'll bring forth your fruit in a season. When you walk with God, it'll cause you to persevere. Your leaf shall not wither when you walk with God not only do you persevere when you walk with God it causes you to prosper somebody shout I'm prosperous somebody say it again I'm prosperous you saying it like it's a cuss word it ain't a cuss word in the church I don't know anybody who just wake up and say it's my goal to sleep under the bridge I don't know anybody who just wake up and say you know it's my goal to be holding up a sign that says we'll work for food no knock to the people who have to do that but God wants you to prosper. It doesn't mean that I don't have problems, but it means God gives me the strength to go through my problems or to go over my problems. My spiritual health is not about how many steps I take. It's about how many steps I take with God. Somebody shout with God. You walking, but are you walking with God? Yeah, yeah. I don't just want to walk with God when I come to church, but when I leave the church, I want to be walking with God. Such is the case in Genesis chapter number five. We are introduced to a young man by the name of Enoch. His claim to fame is not his car. His claim to fame is not his house. His claim to fame is not his money, but his claim to fame, the reason that he's written inside of the Canaan of Scripture. The Bible declares in Genesis chapter number five, verses 21 through 24, there was a man named Enoch 
and he walked with God. He's famous not for anything else. He's famous because he walked with God. God Almighty, I'm going to say it again. He's, he's famous not for anything else, but he's famous because he walked with God. Where are the men who walking with God? I'm going to say it one more time. I got a slow class. I need an AP class. Class is now in session. He's famous not for anything else. But he's famous because of what? What amazes me is not that he walks with God, but what amazes me is that his name means dedication. Which says to all of us that it requires dedication on my behalf to walk with God. When you walking with God for real, for real, it won't always be peaches and cream. You're going to have some rough moments. When you walk with God for real, for real, you're going to have some rough times, some feel like giving up times, but it's only your dedication to God that will keep you walking with God when you feel like giving up. His name means dedication. It's impossible for me to walk with a God that I'm not dedicated to in the first place, which says to all of us that if I want to walk with God, got to be dedicated anybody can walk with God when things are going well but the sign of the maturity of my relationship with God is can I walk with God in a crisis anybody can walk with God when the sky is blue but the sign of the maturity of my relationship with God can I walk with God when all hell breaks loose inside of my life God does not want you to be a Facebook Christian he wants you to be a Twitter Christian Facebook only gives you the option of liking. Twitter only gives you the option of following. And many of us walk with God as long as I like God. But truth be told, I know you saved and sanctified, but can you admit that sometimes he puts stuff inside of his word that I really don't like? I don't like the fact that he tells me to pray for my enemies. I don't like the fact that he tells me to pray for those who despitefully use me. I don't like the fact that he tells me to love my enemies. I don't like the fact that when I'm being persecuted, he says rejoice and be exceedingly glad don't act like you so super duper spiritual like you like everything inside of the Bible but the question has to be raised are you gonna be a Facebook Christian you only follow God when you like what he says or are you gonna be a Twitter Christian God don't care nothing about you liking him he wants you to follow him <laughs> I gotta follow him and be so dedicated to him and even when everybody else says that's too hard, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. I still follow him. Not only does his name mean dedication, but the next thing that we learn about Enoch is not just that he walks with God, but for the first 65 years of his life, he's walking by himself. He does not walk with God until he turns 65 years old and has his first child by the name of Methuselah. Which says to all of us, number two, there's something about children that'll make you walk with God. You don't have to dedicate yourself to God. Have a child. Have a child. Raise them the best way you know how. Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. When they old, they shall not depart. But it never said anything about that in-between phase. Sometimes in the in-between phase, they go crazy. Sometimes in the in-between phase, they begin to act as if they weren't raised inside of your home. They do things out of character. They talk, and you didn't raise them to talk the way that they talk. They walk, and you didn't raise them to walk the way that they walk. And sometimes when your child strays away, it'll cause you to walk with God. Sometimes when your child strays away, It'll cause you to call on the name of Jesus. There's nothing like hurting for your child. He does not walk with God until he has a son by the name of Methuselah. I don't know what it was about this son. The Bible doesn't tell, it what it, tell us what it was, but, but perhaps his son has some kind of ailment that's incurable. The doctors can't cure it. Uh, and because of the sadness in the heart of the father, he starts calling on God like never before. Maybe it was not an ailment. Uh, maybe Methuselah strayed away at one particular moment in time inside of his life. I don't know what it was, but, but whatever it was, he does not start walking with God till he has a child. 
Maybe Methuselah was living a great life. And he said that because my child is doing well, that's all the more reason for me to praise God and walk with God. But whatever it was, he don't start walking with God until he has a child. Which says all of us, even when I'm not dedicated, all you got to do is have a child. And I guarantee you, some point in time in your child's life, that child will bring you to your knees. Here are two benefits of walking with God, and I'm getting ready to raise up. Put it up so everybody can see it. First benefit of walking with God is that walking with God allows us to enjoy his presence. The Bible declares that because Enoch walked with God, he never died, and he was taken up to be inside of the presence of the Lord. I'm going to say that again. Because he walked with God, he never died, and he was taken up to be inside in the presence of the Lord. When you walk with God, you enjoy his presence. That is absolutely necessary. Hear this clearly, because peace is not the absence of conflict, it's the presence of God inside of the conflict, which says that when I'm walking with God, I don't have to wait until my trouble is over to have peace. I can have peace in the middle of my trouble because God is with me inside of my trouble. I love Enoch because Enoch does not wait till he gets to heaven to enjoy the presence of God but he enjoys the presence of God on earth why do you think that when you pray the model prayer it says that kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven many of us are waiting to get to heaven what God's intended for you to enjoy on earth and the main thing that God intends for us to enjoy on earth is his presence In his presence, there is peace. In his presence, there is love. In his presence, there's freedom. In his presence, there's the fullness of joy. But the last thing we see when we walk with God is that walking with God is the lifeline to my children. Everybody repeat this as loud as you can. I only want to do this one time because I'm tired. tired. (laughs) So don't make me do it more than one time because... Y'all too silly. Everybody repeat after me. Walking with God God. is the lifeline to my children. children. Have you not considered that Enoch walked with God? And the Bible declares that when he has his son, his son lives on earth longer than anybody else in the history of the human race. 900 years. And 69 years. I don't know why Methuselah lived 969 years, but I'd like to think it had something to do with this father who walked with God. It says that when I walk with God, it's not just for me, but when I walk with God, it's meant to be a blessing to my children. When I walk with God, it's not just for me, but when I walk with God, it's meant to be a blessing to my children's children. When I walk with God, it's not just for me, but when I walk with God, it's meant to be a blessing to my children's children's children. The Bible declares that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children's children. You don't think that that verse applies to you because you don't have a car to leave to your child. You don't have a house. You don't have clothes. You don't have money. But even if you don't have anything material the greatest thing that we can leave to our children is our faith because when you put faith inside of your child they can run from you but they can't run from God they can run from the church but they cannot run from God the problem with many of us is not that we want to be blessed but many of us want to be blessed for all of the wrong reasons you want to be blessed for your own personal gain and your own personal benefit nobody wants to be blessed to be a blessing to somebody else but is there anybody in here who's made up inside of your mind that God, as a result of me walking with you, I pray that you would bless my household. I pray that you would bless my children. I pray that you would bless my family. I speak Jabez blessings over every man who dares to walk with God that God's going to bless you indeed. That God's going to enlarge your territory. That God will keep his hand upon you. That God will keep us from evil that it might not grieve us. Somebody shout I'm walking with God. 
I'm so dedicated that I walk with God when I feel like it. I'm so dedicated that I walk with God when I don't feel like it. Somebody shout, I'm walking with God. I'm dedicated that I walk with God with tears in my eyes. I'm dedicated that I walk with God with a smile on my face. Somebody shout, I'm walking with God. I walk with God when I'm up. I walk with God when I'm down. Somebody shout, I'm walking with God. And he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Somebody shout, I'm walking. Everybody stand to your feet.